And today I am going to be making a Mother's Day card or project. So I think my camera is at a good view here. I am going to be showcasing dies from Paper Rose, as you see here. Some Nouveau uh, Aqua pens, or uh, what are they called? Yes, I think they're called Aqua pens. Um, and also I pulled out from one of the stamp clubs from Tonic Studios, the uh, So Happy set. So I'm going to first uh, start playing around, but I'm going to try to find my video, so I'll do some housekeeping here. And for anyone who joins me, typically I try to get here a little bit earlier on Fridays, but today it's nice out, <laughs> so I was enjoying the sunshine. Um, I'm going, uh, let's see here, okay. I'm not able to find my videos just yet, so please bear with me if you are re-watching. Just skip over this part because this is what ends up happening, sadly, is that sometimes I have a delay and it takes me a moment to find my own stuff. Oh, hello, Susie and Tanya. Wow, you guys are so fast. So bear with me one second. <laughs> I'm going to have to try to find something really quickly here. And let's see if I can find it. Okay. I'm just trying to find some information that I'm going to want to share with you. So let's see if I can. And I am here, so I do apologize for the silence here. I'm tr just trying to get some information here real quick. Here we go. All right, so I'm almost there, guys. Because I know the questions are going to be asked, and I want to have the information for you. And I beg your patience because it takes me a moment. Okay, here we go. All right, so this is the... Um, all right. Oh, is it? Okay. Thank you for letting me know, Tanya, because that's got to do with the fact that our internet is slow. So give me one second. Yeah, I don't think both things can run at once. Okay, I'm back. Um, let me see if this is gonna um work in just one second i'm gonna come out and come back in again and see if it's gotten any better hopefully okay so can you guys see me better now let me know in the chat before i continue so that way i don't have to restart the video wonderful thank you so much yeah we were just uh we have slow internet speeds here and that was what that was all about okay so Oh, let's get cracking. <laughs> I'm going to use actually my um I'm trying to think of which way to begin first. I think I'm gonna get my yeah, get this out. Poor thing. It's been used and abused and need to get another one of these, but this is a media mat um from Tonic Studios. If you're not familiar with it, I think most people are, but um okay, so this is where you can get messy. And of course you can use other media mats. This one's just fun because it sticks to the surface and then you can wipe it out uh, quite easily. Okay, and I just remembered something. So, all right. So I have here a um, 110 pound cardstock. I just, all I did was fold it in half and I'm going to create a base for this card. So uh, typically that's where I start is I try to see, okay, let me create the base and get that going. And then I can just kind of set that aside. So this is going to be four and a half by six and a quarter, I believe. And that's because of the die that I want to use. Um, and I'm going to do a technique here, hopefully. <laughs> if all goes well. Uh, this is a blush tone. It, however, it does look cream in the videos, but it is a nice light blush. And what I want to do is I did grab some pens here, Aquaflow pens, and I have just some lightweight watercolor paper. So 
I'm just, because I'm of the stamp that I'm going to be using, which is the So Happy stamp set, I, I want to use this little dress and maybe the handbag or shoes. I'm not quite sure yet, but I'm going to start with this. Then, um, thank you so much. Yes, if you guys could click on my links, even if you don't use them today, that is a great way to support my channel. And I do very much appreciate you guys for doing that. Uh, because it means a whole lot to me. I mean, I can't even... <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do the videos if you guys didn't support my channel. So, um, Mark? Mark? Okay, guys. I ran out of water. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, I thought it was ready. Okay, I promise you guys I'm ready now. <laughs> oh my gosh. I thought my husband was in the next room, but he's not. I kind of kicked him out because he was using the internet. <laughs> okay, so thank God for bathrooms close by. I was able to fill this up in my sink. Now, of course, when you're doing any kind of water coloring, you can either wet your, your surface first or after. In this case, because I'm just going to aim for kind of like a wash here, I am going to wet my paper first with a light mist. And I do get kind of messy, so if you're doing this, you're going to want to make sure that you don't have the base of your card sitting nearby. <laughs> but as you can tell, I had already accidentally gotten a little bit of that ink here, the Aquaflow pen. Um, so I'm just going to let this drop here and... Um, of course, it's going to pool with whatever water is already there. Ooh, and if you see that, depending on, you know, how it squirts out of this, it's going to change. This, by the way, is the color pink, flamingo pink. However, it looks bloody red there, so sorry. And I don't, I mean <laughs> the actual blood. <laughs> uh, it's quite intense is what I mean to say. Now, typically I have a little bit of alcohol in this bottle, but today... Um, I don't. It's just water. So, I'm probably going to have to use my heat gun. Um, and what I want to do here is start adding a little bit more color. And what I'm going to do is I have this pen, which has, oh, gorgeous color there. And this is uh, Spice Ginger. It's kind of a darker yellow. But I, as you can tell, it's going to mix really nicely with that. And this is just, of course, to get myself going here. Now, as you can tell, this paper is not ultra thick. It's not a really heavy watercolor cardstock, but I don't think it matters so long as it tolerates the, the water, then you're good to go. Oh my gosh, who sees a kitty cat with two eyes, two ears, and a mouth? <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi, Stace. Thank you for being here. Um, <laughs> it's the Cheshire Cat. We're all mad here. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> anyway, um, and of course, you can manipulate this as you like because you can take a brush and kind of push that here and there uh, however you want to. But again, I'm going for more of a, um, a wash. And yes, I'm going to add more color there because I didn't want those you know, little crazy teeth showed up <laughs> that I just created. Um, but if you can tell, there's a little bit of pink up here, a lighter, much lighter, much more coral color down here. And that's a really pretty palette already. Um, I can lighten this up a tiny bit with an even lighter yellow. And this is Mango Mimosa. So what a pretty name. <laughs> Mango Mimosa. Okay. Um, all right. That's one way to go about life, right? To do that little mess. I'm going to set this aside for a minute. Um, the other way, of course, that we can do this is to take a piece of acetate. I, I tend to keep these because they come with the packaging for, it's the smaller one, um, 
with Tonic Studios, when you know when you get packaging or many other companies, right? You get the uh, the piece of acetate, and then it's got those sticky strips on the back that I know I hate. I can't stand them. <laughs> However, uh, these little things come in handy because in the same manner you can pull your collar um, and then make a background in a similar fashion. Now here I'm going to only use a tiny little drop of that uh, kind of fuchsia color that I was using there and I'm going to see if, I don't know if blue is going to play well with this but I'm going for it anyway. Um, it might turn into purple on me quite likely but this one is the lightest one that I have at the moment and if it doesn't work I might have to go into my distress inks which are just as fun. Um, this is clear water and I'm just going to spritz it very lightly there. Just get those little droplets to kind of flatten out a little bit there, right? And then here I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to use it as if it were a stamp. So you see it did, you know, it mixed the color. It's to be expected, you know, blue and yellow is going to make your green there. Um, and by the way, someone asked me recently on Facebook, um, well, she was mentioning about the fact that she has difficulty matching colors. And I realize that a lot of people do. So what I would suggest with that is if you do, first of all, there's nothing wrong with doing a monochromatic background or monochromatic everything you know so let's just as an example say um make everything in your card or project one color family all the yellows all at once you know or make it all in blues all in reds whatever your your favorite color is and once you're kind of comfortable with the shades of that color then you can introduce a secondary color um and of course i think you know nature is god made so in my eyes i see the perfection of color there uh because i can look outside my window right now for instance and i see that the ground has um it has green it has yellow it has blue it has brown um and so i can um take note of that just the the natural elements around me and then copy that when i'm crafting and that way it you know First of all, it evokes kind of an emotion, depending on what you're tying into your surroundings, of course. But it also is foolproof <laughs> because, you know, um, you won't make a mistake in that way. So let me see here. Uh, you can't unsee the cat. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Um, so this morning, the ladies over at Tonic were playing around with Nouveau products and they were talking. We got talking about the Rorschach tests. Um, and I shared a, a snippet of a little story there, which is that I had a sociology professor in college and he was like this really cool dude. I don't know. Everybody loved him. And he had been in a, a TV commercial. Um, so he played a psychologist giving a, a guy an exam with the cards, you know, holding them up with the little blots. And so every time the guy would see one, he'd say, oh, it's cornflakes with strawberries. It's cornflakes with blueberries or whatever. <laughs> and then at the end, he shows a blank one. And the guy says, finally, the milk for my cornflakes. And it was so cute. It was such a funny ad. I remember this is like back in the, oh gosh, uh, late 80s, I think it was. So it was, it was cute. So here, I wanted to know, and I hope you guys can see this. I could turn on my light, but I think it might. Let's see what happens if I do that. Um, can I? No, I don't think I can turn that one on. Okay, bear with me. I have another one. And I don't know if that's creating more shadow than what it's worth. But if you see here, there's a little bit of blue peaking here and there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me know if that light is worth it. If not, I can turn it off. Hello, Sandra. Because if it's making too many shadows, then I prefer not to use it. Um... But this one's going to dry a little bit faster because of the fact that I didn't put as much water on here. Um, and by the way, on here, I could also do the same thing that I did on the, um, the acetate, which was, you know, to just add the color and do the smushing. 
it doesn't really matter but I think I'm going to turn this off because it's creating a um, reflection that I didn't want. So I am now going to just very lightly sprinkle this with um, some shimmer powder. This one happens to be in Jade Fountain. So I'm just going to do a little bit of this and if you've never used this before, it's um, akin to eyeshadow powder. If you ever buy loose makeup, um, and then it has this beautiful color that will just start um, kind of bursting out as you add water. So I'm just going to lightly mist this. It also has a pearlescent effect, which I love. But if you see that, I love to mix and match it all because one layer might get too muddy but if you allow time to dry and let's just pretend my watercolor was completely dry then you would get a super you know much more intense kind of i call it a response of color but it's you know it's all layering now i don't want this to get muddy i want that blue to pop so before that starts mixing too much i'm going to dry it even though i do want a tiny bit a tiny bit more there <laughs> it's kind of you know you can control it a little bit um so i'm just going to dry this and i apologize for the noise i'm trying not to move that red too much so sometimes depending on the angle in which you use your heat gun you can do a little bit too much moving around. Um, I had a little fiber there, so I wanted to get rid of that. But you can also do this, you know. Try to dry it from more than one angle. Or pounce it with your paper towel, you know, whatever, whatever you like to do. Just try to move that a little bit more. And here it started to get muddy, so... All right, I'm going to set this aside for one second, even though it's still humid. But on my end here, and I don't know if you guys can catch this at all. Um, on my end here, there's already a shimmer going around on this paper. And you can see specks of red, uh, kind of more fuchsia, the blue, teal, the yellow, of course. Um, and it's so pretty. It's, I know that maybe in this lighting it's not the best, but I think it's going to look really cute when it's, once it's all said and done. And I'm going to go back to this other paper. This one's still wet, so it puddled there. Now again, as I said before, this is not super heavyweight watercolor paper, so the effect will be different depending on the paper that you use. I suppose I should use my much thicker paper, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going to try to dry this one. This one I think I'm going to leave as is. I'm trying to think, I have some other papers that I've done like this. Um, one card that comes to mind is a little kitty cat one that I had done. And the entire background was a panel like this and it was so beautiful. 
I'm trying to think if there's anything else around here. I'm looking in my room to see if I have any other samples, but I don't think I've seen any. I'm not readily available anyway. Come on, little guy. Okay, once you feel like that's dry enough, if you want to, you can place it under something heavy. What I end up doing most of the time is that I take the base cutting plate from my uh, my die cutting machines, you know, not this size, but the lar larger ones, and then I just leave it there overnight, and then the next day they're nice and flat for me, so that's just an easy way to go about that. Today, obviously that's not going to happen, so I wish I had some samples dry from earlier, but we're going to have some texture, <laughs> that's for sure, um, because this isn't going to have time to dry. So what I was thinking of doing is to use these dies from Paper Rose, Paper Roses, I keep saying that wrong and I apologize, but this has these really beautiful, um, you know, embossing, I couldn't think of the word, uh, for instance, this one here has kind of like, it looks like etched, and the next one is X's, the next one is almost, uh, I don't know, it reminds me of like, um, like a wood scene, I don't know why. And then this other one is scalloped with little dots. The next one is little hearts. So each one obviously is different. And then the last one is little dashes. So that's what I was thinking of doing today is kind of trying to make the most of all of this um, because I thought I could layer them. And the other thing is I forgot to mention that um, this one cuts on both the outer and inner edge. This one only cuts the outer edge. And the other ones cut on both edges. So all of these are frames and this is a base. So I hope that makes sense. But I think this is what I wanna do is to kind of make the most of this. And I suppose I should have done the whole bit here, but you know how it goes, ladies, we forget. But I'm going to try to fit as many of these here as possible. And then I'm going to run this through my die cutter. Now, we're told don't group your dies all at once. Um, but <laughs> you don't have to follow my advice ever, ever, ever. In fact, I think I'm going to do... I'm trying to think here, guys. Uh, well... I'm trying to think here if I want to do one of the die cuts out of this or not. I don't know. I think I'm going to do all backgrounds. See, this is, this is where I go back and forth. I'm like, do I want to layer all of it or not? Okay, anyway, I'm going to fit all these here. Don't, don't try this at home, <laughs> children. <laughs> or be like me and do whatever the heck you want. Okay, so this is going to go through. Um... And I think I have to cut away this portion, so one second. And this is just how I craft. You guys know how this goes. I edit all of this out of my pretty videos that I make for everyone else. And then when I make my own, you guys get to see the nitty gritty of what truly happens behind the scenes. <laughs> but, okay, here we go. So the reason to not have the dies all at once is because, God forbid, your machine push one on top of the other, you're going to ruin them. And yes, that has happened to me. So that's why I say don't try this at home. Okay. It has happened where the machine accidentally pushes things. But the only thing that I can say about that is if you are going to run multiple dies, um, try to make sure that the paper that you're cutting is all the same density. If it's one thick paper, one thin paper, you may run into some big problems there, okay? So, et voila, okay? This is why I got to telling myself, don't worry about it, because 
see how this is just a frame? Now I can use this panel to play with while that little skinny one dries. So I've got this. And, oh my gosh, I love the colors. I love it. I've got my little heart one. And I'm going to pull this away gently because the other thing is my paper is still not 100% dry. And if you know anything about watercolor paper, then it wants to create like its own little, you know, fiber fest. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it. I'm already kind of seeing things here, guys, just so you know. This is just my brain. Um, there's another frame here. And there's the frame, and that's the one with the little scalloped edge. So cute. And then, oh, ooh la la. That's gorgeous. You see how different it looks when it's not on that messy piece of paper? And my hands, of course, are all colored. But if you see the color saturation, and by the way, this does have, have a slight little sparkle going on. It's so, so pretty. Um, so you, okay. Yes, uh, the tape is very, very useful for sure. Now, I do have a magnetic mat, which is why I'm a little bit more bold, because my magnetic mat helps me to keep every everybody in place, you know? But I have had issues every now and then it happens, you know? Okay, so here, as you can tell, I can either use all of these or I can use them in different directions, you know, layer, layer, layer. That's what I was thinking of. And then, another thing that I can do is now introduce one of my stamps. Um, and I was thinking of using the dress, because this would be for Mother's Day. And then take advantage of this gorgeous color. I hope it fits. It doesn't fit. That's okay. I can paper piece it. Oh, maybe I can't. I need a bigger one. So instead of this one, um, where's my paper? Duh, where did I put it? <laughs> what did I do with my paper? Here it is. Oh my gosh, crazy woman. Okay, let me set this aside for one second before I get frustrated. I can kind of paper piece my dress like that. I think most of you guys know what I'm talking about. So before I get overwhelmed, I'm gonna set these aside. And I can have a two-tone dress with the pink on the bottom and then the hot pink on top. We shall see, okay? Got all those layers over there, so cute. Okay, I'm going to take a stamp block. I'm going to cut away this portion here because I don't need it. So that way I'm not being clumsy. And I still have my other paper over here, my yellows. Still have that going on. But in the meantime, this is I'm going to give myself some options here. So I'm going to use my stamp block and I'm going to use because the the other colors are so vibrant, I am going to go ahead and use black ink, although you could use tone on tone ink if you wanted to. And of course this it's trapped over there. Okay, I'm just gonna use my Versafine. Is this what I wanna use? Hold on one second. Da, 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 da. W, yes. I put that little W there to remind myself that this will work with watercolors because I tend to forget. Okay. So that's what I do. I just write on that little corner. All right. So as I said before, I'm going to make use of what I had already colored and stamped and all that jazz. And of course, I can heat emboss this as well. I don't think I'm going to today, but you guys know that's an option. Okay. So there's my cute little dress. I'm going to do that again on this portion. Of course I can't fit the skirt on it, but that's okay. Let me do it. I think I want to do let me 
see here. I think I want to do the whole center of it, actually, come to think of it. Just thought of something. All right. I'm going to do the whole center of it here. Okay. Like that. All right. And I'm going to let me clean this off real quick. You don't want to get alcohol marker on this, by the way. Um, it will ruin it. I think here what I want to do is to stamp on this piece. Okay. And for that one, I want to use... I always look at things backwards. I want to use the handbag. Let's do the handbag. Um, okay. Now, if you're interested in any of these items, there are links right in the chat. And you'll be able to pick them up. They're still all available. So... If you have any questions, of course, you can let me know. But, um, okay, so I'm thinking of maybe having this dress somewhere in this vicinity. However, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to stamp this um, as a background uh, design element. And this is repeat stamping. And I just want to make sure that I load my stamp with as much ink as possible. So I, if I start out here, kind of a rule of thumb, if you're going to turn it 90 degrees, then keep doing that. You know what I mean? As you're stamping. Um, and then keep your stamp in the same position. Okay. And that makes... Uh, this kind of part of it easier or you know you could do the opposite where now if i was holding it this way now i can turn it this way right and then do a little bit off the page there and this was a little bit too wet so i'm gonna have to you know embellish <laughs> but i'm just gonna do those two there and i think that's a good enough indication that there's a handbag in this woman's life so i'm gonna let that go <laughs> before I ruin it. And I got that from here. So uh, note to self, be uh, conscious of that block. Now, if you, I'm using this, but of course I do have the stamp platform. I just realized that not everyone has it. So I'm just going about it different ways, of course. Hello, Elizabeth. Thank you for being here. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for watching that as well. I hope you liked it. And Elizabeth is referring to my little caddy. Um, that I made for my laces. <laughs> I still have another one to make and I cut everything out in her. But oh, I lost I lost a lot of time there. So um I shouldn't say I lost time. It took me longer than I thought. <laughs> and I set it aside because I got frustrated with myself, not with the project. So I want to clear that up. Uh, the project in and of itself was great because it made me happy that I'm like, you know what, when this is, this organization is done, I am going to be so proud of myself <laughs> because I use products that I had on hand and all that. Now, just to let you know, there is a die that will cut out this dress. I am doing this because I want to get closer to that line. Um, and honestly, it'll take me longer. <laughs> to die cut it and then fussy cut around it then to just go ahead and you know go in with the scissors um if fussy cutting is not for you you don't have to do this of course you can just stamp the dress once out of whichever color you like or just stamp it on the clear piece of paper uh, i should say white and then add the color directly with the pen i just happen to like that whole mixed look there oh i cut off a piece of my dress <laughs> whoops <laughs> that's okay i can sew with a black pen um okay so there's my little dress and then as i said before i stamped this one um but obviously i didn't have enough for the whole thing but as i said i can sew with a black pen so here's what i'm going to do to clarify what i mean 
So I'm going to follow this line here all the way up and I'm just using a block marker. Um, you can use a block, you know, pen, whatever you like. And I'm just going to kind of follow that line there. Try to make it the same thickness, but if it isn't, guys, no one's going to care. <laughs> Not a single soul. <laughs> And now what I'm going to do is cut the center of this dress out. And it finally got warm in upstate New York. And now I'm hot. Whereas normally, like literally a day ago, I was wearing a really thick sweater. And now I need air conditioning. This, this state drives me bonkers. Bananas. All right, so I'm following there this little bit so I think you guys you know can figure out what I'm doing here and this is just one way to go about things of course if you're into really really shabby uh, projects I did a dress like this before and what I did is I took my sewing machine and stitched on every line of the dress um, so some of you guys may have seen that and it came out so cute I really enjoyed it um, but you need to be in a special mindset for that oh wait I needed to go around this line I meant to do that okay so here we go just like that okay so now I have that center portion that I was talking about and this is going to be layered right on top and I know it's not a dress that everyone would wear but I'm liking it <laughs> um, Yes, it's the same here. I think we're in this in the same, what is it, latitude? Not longitude, but latitude, yeah. Oh, it's okay, Stace. <laughs> you can go back and watch it another time. No worries. I wanted to come along and do a live video because it just so happens that Fridays are a good day for me to do videos. My son is at school. Um my husband typically isn't home he is today but normally he's not and so then you know i'm not taking time away from anyone and all that good stuff um what i want to do now is because i want this as my background and there's a lot of the same color going on here even though it's broken up by this pattern what i would like to do is to add a little something that's going to pull away from that background I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to use my best friend. Let me grab that because I forgot. Um, okay. And that would be vellum. So you can get vellum in different colors. I, um, love this medium because there's so much that you can do with it what I'm going to do and this is from tonic studios by the way in case you're interested this one happens to be white vellum yes it does come in different colors if you didn't know that and you can color it yourself so what I would like to do if you remember this little guy here is that I would like to kind of use I don't know if I'm going to use this with this a combination. I'm thinking here, thinking, thinking. Um, but I want to do like a little window. That's what I was thinking. I think I'm going to use it this way. Okay, I think I figured it out. So this one needs. <laughs> I do everything backwards in my brain. Okay, so I'm going to just apply adhesive here first. A little glue. And this could have... Hmm. Should we stencil? Hello, chiquita. Thank you for being here. Hola, hola. <laughs> yeah, isn't that so adorable? That little dress. That's from this set here. And it comes with all things uh, sewing. Um, in fact, I'm, I, I'm indebted to someone. I'm supposed to make a kit for her. I had done so before and I haven't done it yet. I'm, I'm going to do it again. Um, but I'm trying to think here. Oh, there's just so many things that come to mind. You know what, guys? 
I'm gonna do I, I'm I'm changing gears here I'm gonna do a little die cutting and then we're gonna add the die cuts to this piece here and I think some of you know what I mean because there's this pair of scissors here that are just so cute oh there's just so much about this so what I'm picturing is a bunch of little scissors here so bear with me guys because I'm gonna do some cutting all right I'm gonna set this aside and this is just going to be texture all over the place but sometimes it, you need texture in your life so i'm going to cut this away and mamma mia this thing that that little arm <laughs> that little arm <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. okay i'm gonna do this and I just need to fit my little scissors in there. So this is what, three inches, three and a quarter, whatever. The measurement doesn't matter in this case. Okay. I'm gonna keep my essential pieces here and get rid of the rest. Okay. I'm just throwing stuff behind me here. Um, okay, now I'm going to try to get a few scissors out of this and I'm of course using this paper because if I took the trouble to color it and it's going to be cohesive with everything else then hey I want to use it. You get a glimpse into the left-handed brain that does everything 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 backwards. <laughs> I mean to do this and I do that, whatever. Okay, so now let's cut this little guy. I think I'm gonna be able to use my little baby here, so let's do that. I don't think I need this little guy anymore. I don't know, maybe not. Let's use him, or it, I should say. Not a him, it's an it. <laughs> I'm adopting mentalities that I don't want in my brain. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna cut some scissors, no pun intended here, and I'm gonna show you guys the intricacy of this. It's just so gorgeous. Now, if you are not used to cutting intricate dies, if it's not this brand, you have like an off brand or whatever, um, sometimes the little details won't cut, so just cover your die with washi tape and it'll be more uh, useful. But look at how cute! It's so delicate and adorable. So I'm going to try to repeat this a few times the same way that I did the handbag, only in this case it's going to be the little scissors. And I suppose it didn't really matter if I did it in the yellow, but because it's got, a, again, it's got that little shiny quality about it. I really want to use it. Uh, who's here? Oh, hi, Ruth. Thank you for being here. By the way, guys, Ruth is a design team member for Tonic Studios. If you have not seen her tutorials, her work is impeccable. She's such a wonderful artist. So you want to make sure that you follow her channel. And of course, I mean, I encourage everybody to follow each other's channels here. I just, you know, I have to give uh, credit where credit is due. Uh, Ruth has a very beautiful vision of how to use things. And she's not a scatterbrain like me. <laughs> me, I'm like, ooh, I think I want to do that. No, I want to do that. <laughs> she's calm, cool, and collected. <laughs> You're very welcome. Swirling, yeah, I call it multitasking, but you know, but yeah, it's my my oh, my brain just doesn't shut off though, it can get quite noisy in there. It's <laughs> the problem <laughs> because I don't, um, you know, it interrupts my sleep and everything because I have so many ideas running through my head and not enough time to execute them. Um, but I've heard that, you know, it's a good thing to like to keep a notebook next to your bedside and all of that. Um, me, what I want to do is that I want to take my ear and my nose and squeeze on them at once and take a screenshot <laughs> like we do with our cell phones. 
<laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Because <laughs> by the time I grab a pen, I'm going to forget. <laughs> I don't have the capacity to, to draw what my brain is thinking. Um, anyway, one more pair of scissors and I promise, or maybe two. <laughs> we'll move on. <laughs> And guys, don't try the don't try it because it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. I tried it on my husband and he just blinked really hard. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you guys know I love love to laugh. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ruth. Oh, yeah, let me recap those colors real quick because they are all uh <laughs> The aqua pens, mango mimosa, flamingo pink. <laughs> I'm a Latin girl, so we have to use these colors. And clear water. So mango mimosa, yellow, flamingo pink, clear water. And I also sprinkled a little bit of the jade fountain because I just, I love that pearlescent color in there. I think it's so pretty. <clears throat> Yes, the Aquaflow pens, they don't get enough credit, even though, I mean, I always end up, you know, <laughs> colored all over the place, but that doesn't bother me. I don't, you know, it's the price of doing business, that's what I call it. Okay, enough with the scissors. I'm going to put these aside. <clears throat> now, of course, there is a shadow piece to that, but... Because, again, I'm thinking of graphic elements. If you ever study design or look at a magazine about design or read about it, whatever, there are different types of ways of looking at uh, any kind of drawing. And to keep it simple, you can look at a drawing as a solid piece. You can look at it as an outline. So think, you know, just the outer portion. You can look at a drawing as... <clears throat> um portions of it okay so to explain i took the dress and i looked at my drawing as only a portion and so that's why i cut this piece out and of course i had to connect the dots so to speak but that's one way of looking at it i looked at my drawing if you will it's a stamp but as the outline i was able to just stamp it like that and then if I wanted to, I could definitely just color this all in in black, and that would be a solid. And I, I hope that makes sense. Um, but that's that's where my brain goes. <laughs> that explains a little bit of how I think. This is brand new, so I'm going to keep, keep squeezing it. Now, I have a needle here, so bear with me, guys. Um, and the fun thing is that you can do that with everything. You can do that with, um, okay, brand new bottle. <laughs> and I, I keep saying my bottles don't clog, but I think it's the temperature here. Yep, there it goes. I get temperature fluctuations in upstate New York, and I'm blaming that. Okay, so I'm going to lightly, if it comes out, <laughs> apply some adhesive here. Come on, baby, you can do it. I promise you there's glue in this box. It's brand new. I just opened it. What? <laughs> Only on the lives. Only on the lives. This is God's way of keeping me humble, guys. There we go. All right. There we go. Do, 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 do. All right. So, my little frame. Ah, no, I did that. Well, I guess, yes, I did that too soon. Didn't I? Yes, I did. Oh, I should have traced around it. I forgot that. Let me get my die. I did that too soon. I got ahead of myself, guys. Sorry about that. So, all you need to do here is grab a pencil if you didn't take it into the next room or marker or whatever. Okay, let's just do this right quick, okay? Because I'm just going to cut around this anyway. Not with this die, because if you remember, this die will cut the outer portion and the inner portion. But, 
it'll it'll make sense in a second and what I wanted to do is get my little scissors and I'm going to start doing the same thing that I did before with the handbags right turn it a degree 90 degrees 90 degrees etc right and this is what I'm thinking to do that because then that's going to become let's see here I'm going to go that way you know you place them wherever you're happy I think that's going to be cool um, and then this is going to be framed out now you don't need a whole lot of adhesive here so I'm just going to pat this on the back of my hand and place it down and I'm not going to be too fastidious about placement because if not, we'll be here all day. And I'll check the chat in just a second. But the idea is to... Now this is going to dry clear, even though I'm being ultra messy, but it'll dry clear. Um, just, you know, There we go. And if you didn't like the scissors, but you like a heart shape, these little scissors almost look like a heart at the top, so you can snip that portion off and use that as a design element. So I think this die and stamp set is ultra versatile, even though it comes across as this very, you know, homey, uh, likes to sew and knit or whatever. But not necessarily. It all depends on how you use the elements that are in here. Because you could do a, a very modern card using the very same pieces that are in here. All, like I said before, it's all depending on how you're looking at the lines that are already there. And I can always, you know, go back and add a little more glue. Um... Oopsie. And for you ladies who like making shakers, of course, this would, this would make a really cute shaker card, too, with um, the vellum. Okay, last little pair there, okay? And then this is why I said I, I did this too soon, <laughs> after all that fighting with the glue, because this little frame is going to go on top of this now. And in fact, I might not even use the entire thing on the card. I might only use half of it um okay all right so now i'm gonna follow that line that i drew get myself right on track here in fact i think the line was too big but that's okay that's gonna work perfectly because that was the outer perimeter of this anyway and while i clean my hands i'm gonna look at the chat um You guys said hello to each other awesome oh that's awesome thank you so much guys for supporting each other thank you thank you so i'm just gonna pat this really quickly because some of the glue is a tiny bit wet but as i said before i'm now going to just cut away the edge okay apologize to the scissors if you need to As I do when I'm pr I'm pruning my plants, I'm like, I'm so sorry to do this to you, but it's for your own good. <laughs> my husband's like, really? <laughs> I just told him it's been proven. You talk to your plants, they grow faster. Leave me alone. <laughs> okay, but if you see this, I mean, how cute. And if you're crazy like me, at the end, when no one's looking, you can get out a Nubo drop bottle and just go around that whole edge <laughs> um, and have some craft therapy that way. I don't dare do that on a live video because, you know, my subscription count would go <laughs> downhill. Um, okay, so, boom. All right, so we've got that panel. So pretty. All right, now we can revisit this idea, right? Because as I said before, that doesn't mean I have to use the whole thing. 
Nothing is lost by only using a portion of it, but you pick the piece that you think is going to work best. Because as much as we love everything we make, it doesn't all have to fit on a card. <laughs> all right, so I'm thinking of her little dress floating here. And remember, we have yet more frames going on. So who's to say I can't double this one up and put it up here? Okay, because again, I, I just want dimension, right? Or I can single out this little dress with a frame. However, it can be smaller than the dress. So I think that's where I'm going to go with that one. Right? Ooh la la! Magnifique! Okay, so I'm going to add this frame piece here to close this off. Okay? The way that I'm going to do that is... And I'm just going to add a little drop of glue here and here. I'm going to put it on here first because I'm going to be cutting that off. Okay, and I know this is kind of weird, but it'll work. Trust the process. All right, so there. Come on, stay, stay, stay. All right, I'm going to pop it on there. Just hold it for one second. Now, because I only put glue here and here, I'm going to follow that line since I can see through this. Okay, I'm just going to angle my scissors so that I don't cut the whole, you know, thing. I'm just going to lift this up a second. And yes, you can do this with a paper cutter. I'm just, you know, I'm just playing around here. Okay. And if it's crooked, just forgive yourself for it. <laughs> All right, I think it's going to be okay, though. Mm, trying to be gentle here. Okay, I think I got it. All right, and if you're wondering, I am going to cut this part away as well. So I've got this snip and this snip. And then out of two frames, I'm going to essentially just create one. Okay, nothing is lost there, however, because I'm going to take this piece and I'm just going to add it up here as a design. Maybe up here. There we go. Or at the bottom so I can ground it. Let's do it. Let's see here. Nope, it's lost there. So again, I mean, this is just all playful, fun. Actually, I should... Mm, let me see here. I hope I'm in frame. I should probably put it there to cover up that little smudge that I had done on that purse. So let's be smart about that. I'm going to put the glue where I want that piece. I'm just covering up that little smudge. And I'm going to add this piece up here. And then woo it's still kind of wet, guys, just to let you know. The reason it's not going on really quickly is because... I had colored on this with watercolor, and my paper is not 100% dry, but it'll work. Okay, here we go. I'm going to make the, the most out of that frame. And whatever I do on that one corner, I'm going to repeat on the other. So, like that. Just to make it cohesive. And this is typically how I craft. I do go back and forth a lot. And I apologize if it drives anyone batty, but I don't know how to craft any other way, to be completely honest. I've tried to, you know, change things up a bit. And I can do it if I pre-record, but on a live video, I don't think I'd be capable, honestly. And I have to, you know, own up to my own faults there. Now, I think this would look great if I back it up in black. I think I should do that. Uh, let me grab a piece of black paper. <clears throat> I'm gonna cut a piece of jet black down to the size that I need. 
This is, uh, let's see, what weight is this? 80 pound cardstock. It's got a linen weave and then it's smooth. It's so, so pretty. Um, sometimes the best thing that you can do is create a, you know, a shadow or a background for yourself. Okay, so let's cut that down. I'm going to measure, of course, this piece because this is what I want to frame. Thank you so much. See, this is the cool thing about other crafters. <laughs> you guys get it. <laughs> oh, I so appreciate that. <laughs> okay, three. So I'm going to do three by four and three quarters. Okay. So I'm going to go four and three quarters. I always make it a little bit larger than I need, just in case. And I forgot this one already. Three. Let's see how that fits. And I think I want a thinner, thinner edge there. So I'm gonna go with three and one eighth. Okay, that's better. And it just grounded the look of that too, which is so cool. Um, so a little bit of glue here. And I'm, uh, you know, I know you guys, I uh, make a lot of projects in this, you know, whole pastel thing. Um, but quite honestly, the strong colors are so much <laughs> like more fun. <laughs> I hate to say it because I'm surrounded with pastels, but you know, I think for card making, like when you want to make a real strong statement, the, the darker colors just really pop so much. Um, now I had mentioned my base card being the um, this pale color here, okay? But I can certainly ground that outer portion as well. I left myself enough room for that. Okay, now mind you, this is kind of warped. Remember I had mentioned that? But for the sake of the video, I'm not gonna worry about it. Just going to go ahead and frame it out and cut it down. What you can also do is um, use a dry embossing folder on this or use a stencil and push it through your machine and get some even more um, texture on that. Now, the way that I would do a stencil for this is to just go ahead, since we're talking about all these things, go ahead and, for instance, you can cut out the body form multiple times out of a separate piece of paper the same way that I had um well no I haven't done it here but just take one piece of paper and cut the body form a bunch of times using that base paper then run it over this one um and that way you get yourself a custom looking you know uh embossing folder or you can cut it out of foam too, if you have very thin foam or thick foam even, you know, it depends on what your machine's able to handle, but that would be a lot of fun. I should probably do that and show, you know, on a different video or share the picture on Instagram or something. Um, because until very, very recently, and I have to say, of course, I wasn't born knowing everything, right? <laughs> None of us are, but, um, Yes, until very recently, I don't know, I was perusing the internet and I caught this, um, it was kind of like a blog post or Insta post or whatever, and this young lady was saying that she had just discovered this past month that other people, when they say the phrase, oh, visualize, visualize ABC, right? She said that she didn't know that other people actually could because her brain is incapable of visualizing absolutely anything in the abstract. And of course I had a big what <laughs> moment because I'm the opposite. And I thought, wait, there are people who can't? I didn't know that. So quite a learning opportunity there. I, I was telling my husband, I said, you know what? This is a game changer because I've always explained things in such a visual manner with the very intention of trying to make things more clear 
and I just now realized that there is a whole group of people that I have been confusing <laughs> even more so than before by saying, well, visualize this, you know? Um, and yeah, anyway, there's a, a word for that. Uh, I think it's, it's not aphasia, is it? It's, uh, no, I don't think that's the word, but in any case, um, and I'm on the hyper end of that. Like there's, there's two spectrums of it, or I should say there is a spectrum of it and I'm on one end of it, and this young lady was on the other and, you know, you discover so much about how the human mind works and it's just mind blowing. At least for me, I, I find it to be very, very interesting. So this little guy here, I like the thinner kind of frame look. And thank God for Nouveau Glue because it gives me a moment to kind of wedge it back and forth, right? Um, and then if I have too much, I'll just cut it away. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And if, oh, please fit. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to fit for a second. And if it's too... Um, we call it if it doesn't if it doesn't have like the standard measurement for an envelope uh i don't worry about that Oof, i didn't like the way that cut give me one second guys i need to cut this on my uh rotary okay that's one little corner there that i'm not happy about but it's okay, moving along. I might cut it down a tiny bit more off camera. Okay, now let's get to this. <laughs> it's time. I'm gonna go ahead and place this here. Um, but I have a son who's a musician and he actually sees sound. So when he plays music, he sees colors at the same time. And I just thought that was so cool um to for him to have that you know way of interpreting music wait my frame what happened oh it's this one i'm like what did i do that's the wrong one <laughs> oh, i was gonna have a moment there okay wait a minute i need more glue <laughs> i'm like i could have sworn i put a little edge on that grabbing the wrong piece of paper okay let's put this here Boom, 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 boom. Walk it down, walk it down. I put too much glue. Wipe it off. And I always keep um, a baby wipe or paper towel nearby, guys. Usually can't see it in the videos, but it's always there. Okay. Cut away the excess. And this little bit here actually adds more depth even though it's covering the background and I love that now th these little hearts I think it's because this was watercolor paper and it was still kind of wet they didn't all cut out and that's going to drive me batty in fact I wonder if that's meant to yeah, I think this was meant to deboss, but because it's watercolor paper, it cut right through. I don't know. I'm just making it up as I go along because I have no idea. But it does have the tiniest little hearts I've ever seen, and I think those frames are so pretty. Um, so Pokey Tool to the rescue. It's going to poke out all the little hearts. And I want this for the simple reason that it's, again, going to add more depth. Um, honestly, if the card didn't have, like, the whole black background and all that, I wouldn't care too much. But I think the details count, guys. Just, you know. And it got really quiet all of a sudden in my house, so I have probably, probably, I don't know how to say that, I've more than likely been screaming because my husband was mowing the lawn and all of a sudden it just got so quiet and I realized my voice had been very high. Ja, ja, ja. Okay, done, done, done. Okay, now this little guy here, 
this little guy here and they're going to overlap but honestly I'm thinking hmm it's too bad I can't make this sturdier I would have to cut it again but I don't think I want to do that um I'm just going to add a little bit of glue here for this one Place that right. I want to kind of have that little piece there, there, there. <laughs> I didn't want it overlapping the black paper. And what's tricky about the watercolor paper is, of course, that it tends to be undulated when, once you've added water to it. If you didn't, you know, flatten it out, as I mentioned before. So if you're going to plan something like this out, I highly suggest you do let it dry overnight. You'll get a better result. So because of that, I'm going to aim toward this edge now with this one, just to ground it a bit. Because if not, it's going to start kind of, it's going to become a flag. <laughs> so I'm going to do this. Okay. And then just attach it here and here. Okay. I still want this to be rather delicate. Okay. And to think that this is one, essentially one die set, because I didn't really use the, the die, well, actually no two, because I did use the scissors, but two dies for one card is not too bad. And of course the one came with all the rectangles, but I think it's super. Now, last but not least let's go with this dress and then i'm going to get my um what do you call it my foam adhesive i omitted this piece but i can actually put it on the back and you know pretend i'm really cool and sign it <laughs> um And just grab some foam. I'm thinking here. Oh, I forgot I had these little squares. These are cool. So I think this is going to be perfect because then I can add them right here on the base of the dress. So aim there. And then right in the center. <clears throat> Excuse me, and these are super thick, but hey, they were in my stash, so gotta use them, right? Go there. What I don't want is to have the dress um, capsize on me, <laughs> but I could definitely use maybe a little strip here, and I do have, actually, I have the strip uh, adhesive that's... Um, foam so I'm gonna take advantage of that so before I do the dress just re real quick here this is nice and thin so I'm just gonna put it on the edge of this and this is of course personal preference it won't take anything away from your card if you just have the piece of paper you know floating or whatever because it's handmade I just have OCD, that's all. Okay, so there's that. And I can take away my little foamies or what's the liner. And this will be almost done. Okay. And I'm going to be nice and gentle with this, but you can. You can even separate this if you want to. You can, if you wanted to, you can take the ball tool. You know one of these guys? Where are they? These tools that have, you know, the little nib. And you can totally shape that dress and go crazy with that. That would be a different video. <laughs> so, um, this I think is nice. And let me go ahead and share with those of you who got here a little bit later the die set, which is Paper Roses. The link is right in the chat, right at the beginning. 
This I got through scrapbook.com. So was the adhesive, okay? And then the vellum, as you saw, was from Tonic Studios. So is the classic card in black. And then the, uh, the stamps and the dies, which we didn't even break into really, <laughs> but how fun, right? And of course, you know that I'm going to want to add some little gems to this or drops. So let me go ahead and grab something. Um, hi, Sam. Thank you for being here. I'm trying to think of what color I want to put on here. And my little drop kind of separated a little bit here but I, I do have this pretty gold um and this one's called honey gold and i use it quite a bit because i love 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 this color but guys let me know what you think so far i think it's pretty fun <laughs> and of course if you hold it here from the side you get to see all that crazy dimension on that dress but that's okay. I think it, you know, of course makes it stand out, but I, I want to make the little sash there glisten. So that's where I want to put in that nouveau drop. And you can definitely use it as if it were paint if you want to. Um, and I don't want to add too much color because there's already this gorgeous color going on with the you know it looks it went toward kind of pinky orange right um but then in the center of these little scissors the handles there i can add some little drops as well just to keep it all cohesive now just like that and i'm gonna tap it a little bit because again my drops have gotten cold overnight um and so when i pull away it they tend they tend to do the kind of hershey kiss drop thing but i want them to level um create that dome shape and i find that when they're a little bit warmer they do that much better so if you find that your drops are doing that it's likely because they're cold and i don't want any um what is it? 1950s uh, comb bra action on my card. <laughs> I don't want that. I want it to be pretty. Okay. Now, of course, you could go crazy adding shine to the, just the handle of the handbag. Whatever you want to pop, you can add a little bit of white to that background uh, with a gel pen. I mean, there's just so much you can do with this. I can't believe that this card started out <laughs> with two pieces of paper that, you know, I spritz all over the place, right? Um, I forgot to use this one, but <laughs> of course, now looking at this, I can do the same thing in a different tonality and it would be equally as beautiful. Uh, actually, no, I didn't forget. I used it for the scissors. I just remember now. Um, but yeah, you know, just using all those pearlescent colors and all of that can yield such different results, right? Um, thank you so much. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Now, let me give you guys a peek of that other item that, um, I made a video for today, just very quickly. Um, <clears throat> because... <laughs> Of course, you know, you make these videos and sometimes you're like, I can't believe I made that mistake. Um, however, this was for BB Craft and what I was showcasing here was how you can organize your laces. Um, and so in that video, I focused on how to build this little caddy uh, that you see here. And I happen to have a lot of this paper. So I was like, you know what? That's going to be great. It's going to fit in my drawers and I'm going to be able to make quite a few of them. This, by the way, is five and a half by eight and a half. And then the sides are two and a half inches tall. So if you watch that video, you're going to watch me do a snafu. And it's the little edge here on the top and bottom. I meant to cut those papers to the 
the width of my box and I accidentally cut them too short but I made it work you can tell it's still the box is here it's not falling apart but I did mention in the video that I was supposed to cut them at five and a half by one inch so in case the video comes across as like what is she talking about that's all it was and then I also included um, the video share or part of the video shares how I made this little wax seal but I didn't share the tutorial on how I made the little envelope, which also has the gilding flakes, simply because I ran out of room <laughs> um, on my phone. That's why. So I just wanted to, you know, apologize for that. But I did what I could. Um, and I look forward to, you know, sharing more of these. Because I did make a bigger one, but that's already full of ribbons. Um, so I'm not going to take that out right now. But this is a lot of fun. I hope you guys like it. And of course, as I say in every video, this is just meant to inspire you to get out the items that you have and try to look at it from a different perspective. Uh, lose the fear of using tools like this. You know, you guys saw I didn't do anything spectacular with this. All I did was let it fall on the paper and add some water and that's it and you know look what came of it the tools will help you make it what you want it to be and of course these um i think are fun when you can get a graduated set of dies because of the fact that you're going to get so many sizes to play around with and if you don't want to use all of them you can still achieve a similar look by using one and then all you have to do is like turn it around and do what I did here, you know, um, cut down the die and then use the edges and bring it forward, you know. Um, that way you create all of your little edges the same uh, texture but a different size. So I hope, you know, that you learn something when you watch these videos. But yeah, you're very, very welcome. Um, so Sandra says you've been coloring, but I'm sorry, there's for some reason my <laughs> my chat has a little heart on it now that I can't get rid of it. I don't know where that came from, but it covers up the chat and then I can't see it. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. Thank you so much. And the uh, just oh, another announcement that I wanted to make. And um, I know if Ruth is still here, she can vouch for it. This coming uh, Monday, the 27th of April, um, Tonic Studios is going to begin the vault sale. The items are going to be different um, daily because they will release the, um, the kits on a different day. They'll do the stamp club, which is what you saw here. Um, and as you can see, the stamp club doesn't necessarily only come with stamps. Where are they? Here we go. So if you're not familiar, this is considered a stamp club, but as you can see, they come with dies quite often that will match the stamps. Then another day they'll have, I think on Monday, they're also going to have the magazines and the magazines and kits. And then it was the stamp club on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, I think it was something else. And I can't remember now. However, um, the, did I say 27th? I did, didn't I? Yeah, it's the 24th. I'm sorry about that. Um, so yeah, the, um, that is a great sale to take advantage of maybe items that you, uh, would have missed out on. And someone, uh, left a comment on one of my videos stating that you can get, um, the kits even if you don't subscribe. Now, um, that's very true. I mentioned in the videos when I use a kit, I mentioned the subscription because of the fact that if you do subscribe, you get the 10% off of everything else. That doesn't mean you have to. It says it clearly on the page, of course. You can get a one-off purchase. And I think the, uh, the comment was regarding the fact that even if the kit is no longer for sale you may be able to get a one-off kit or something like that um and that might be true on some occasions in which a subscriber skips the kit for that month because you can do that 
So if there are any left over, you may be able to get a hold of one. But I don't want to encourage that on my videos because I don't want anyone to think that they can just call up Tonic and get a one-off kit whenever they like because that's not truly what the subscription service is for. So that's why I didn't mention that in any of my other videos and I'm not going to be doing that going forward. But of course there's an exception to every rule. So I just wanted to put that out there and I think um, that's about it. I never mentioned being part of the design team for Tonic Studios because I'm not. I just love the product and that's why I share it and I hope that you guys enjoy it when I do because I'm just, you know, sincerely sharing what I really love to do, which is to play around, use everything, all that good stuff. So I hope that my videos come across as sincere is what I want to say. Um, but thank you. Thank you again for having been here. Um, and of course, reach out if you have any questions and support each other because that's what we ought to be doing, ladies. Have a beautiful weekend. And as I always say, I hope that you can be inspired and be blessed. Oh, and don't forget a thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up if you like it. Ciao, ciao. Thank you, guys.